Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshick of Mad River Outfitters and the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and we've got uh, what we think will be a pretty entertaining video for you today. Wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the gear that Kelly and I were using on the Mad River uh, on, on this day that we floated down uh, with Pat on Kelly's recent visit. And uh, first and foremost, uh, Kelly was using, of course, he was using the Streamer X rod from Echo, which is a rod that he designed. You've heard us talk about it a lot. You've heard Kelly talk about it a lot. You've heard the two of us talk about it together. Uh, one of our best-selling rods, no question by a long shot, the Echo Streamer X. Um, but it was, it was kind of cool. Kelly talked, uh, he was using the six-weight version. And <clears throat> Kelly talked quite a bit about uh, how he oftentimes prefers the six weight over the seven weight. And, uh, you know, the six is really perfect for the Mad River here. Uh, as you've seen in the video, it's not nearly as big and wide as the Madison. Uh, and Kelly clarified that uh, oftentimes when he's on foot, he'll throw the six weight. When he throws a floating line, which he does quite often, uh, he'll throw the six weight and <clears throat> the six a lot of people think that you're not going to be able to throw as big of a fly with a six and that's really not the case um, in fact he was running we would theoretically put the 200 grain uh, streamer max long on a six weight well he was running i think it's either 240 or 250 the streamer max um, uh, seven eight uh, which is the line that's on the on the reel right now. This is the actual, I believe this is the reel that we used on the water that day. But this has the 200, I think it's 240 or 250 grain. I, I can't remember. Um, and, and this six weight will throw that just fine. In fact, uh, it actually might throw it better on short casts. Uh, just tends to load up faster and load up better. So uh, we did talk quite a bit about why you might want to own the streamer max in a six versus the seven so kelly we're here uh in ohio today on the mad river i just happened to notice that you're of course fishing the streamer x from mm -hmm. echo our favorite streamer rod and our best selling streamer rod but you're throwing the six mm -hmm. and uh i find it interesting i think i think pat did some research the other day and we sell 20 to 1 seven weight over the six weight i love that six talk about why you might mm -hmm. want the six versus the seven for me and i've said this forever I and mean, when anybody asks that i fish the six weight on foot almost exclusively because i'm not i run the it depends a little bit on the water and stuff like that but on foot i'm not running big casts i, I i'm a hunt your water don't hope it and I'm, I'm picking spots and i want a rod that loads quicker i mean I, I need it to and i'll still run 250s on these six weights i don't have any problem with that but I don't get a, and if I'm standing up and I've got in a boat and I can, maybe I'm stretching it out a little bit further, I generally go to a seven weight when I'm in a boat. Mm -hmm. But when I walk fish or in tight water, I need a rod that loads closer. And the six weight, and when I say closer, 40 foot still, I mean, there's no problem. You can still reach out with these six weights, but they, they load quicker inside because they're a lighter rod. Mm -hmm. And it's just easier and you got more control of your fly. And it, with this, you know, modern six weights, the way they load and unload, you can carry a five, six inch fly, no problem. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, and I also, it depends on like this river is just not big enough, not enough water depth, not that I would be thinking I was hindered in any way. Matter of fact, anywhere I grew up, when we, when Michigan, <clears throat> I, I exclusively fish six weights. Right. And, uh, you know, it's just when you get into the, if I'm in a boat and it's more, it's, a little bit further like on the mad or something like that madison it's uh i run sevens but most of the time if i'm walk fishing which i do a lot mm -hmm. i'm on a six weight well i i find that that rod uh fishes very well with the shorter sink tips mm -hmm. uh, i'm fishing today with the new scientific anglers five foot tip mm -hmm. and uh, i like it a lot better on the six yeah and, and i also find um that i like that rod better with a floating line Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's an overlooked um, method of, of fishing is the floating line system. And I, and I, as you know, I run a lot of floating lines on walk, when I walk. Yeah. Like on the Madison, 
and I'm I'm not a big advocate. You know, you hear people talk about this all the time. Oh, they're in this big deep water, and I don't believe that. I don't. I seldom have seen a real fish deeper than three foot of water. Four would be pushing the envelope, and so. Uh, and when I'm walk fishing, especially on a fast river like the Madison, I'm fishing this much water. I'm fishing the edges, right? I can't mm -hmm. get in the middle of that river and fish back. Right. And so I'm fishing upstream. I like the fact that with a floating line, it goes past me when I'm bringing the line in. I'm not stepping on it like a sinking line. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously a six is going to be, I, I hesitant to ever say the word softer because we got into this mindset of fast rods, you know, 25 years ago. And people will think that a, a soft rod means it's, you know, doesn't have any guts. It's not, obviously if you drop a weight, the rod's got to get, it's got to flex more somewhere. And right. so you could call it soft, you'd say a different flex zone, but it's just, that's why it would work better with the floating lines, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and with a floating line, if you went to a seven, you could probably figure just to get the weight and all the things that you're talking, you know, grainage and stuff, an extra 20 feet. Well, you don't need the extra 20, right? you know, so... It takes something to flex a rod, right? Yeah. And so the sixes, and I don't understand it either. I, I my shops the same way. I sell probably exactly the same number you do. You know, the six weights are, they're a little bit deck fluff sitting there. It's like, you know, try this rod, you'll really like right, it. Right, right. <laughs> you know, well, and, I and, think and a lot of people would be better be BF, honestly, a lot of people would be better with the six because they don't load their rods. They don't throw the lines fat, uh, enough to get used to that drift and push. And the six weight would make a lot of people better casters. They just don't want to believe that. Well, and I think the, the mm -hmm. big fear is they're thinking that they're throwing big mm -hmm. uh, dungeons or boogeymans, mm -hmm. and they think that the seven's going to be better at throwing that than the six, and it's not necessarily the case. Quite often, it's just the opposite because yeah. they don't flex their rods, and right. it's you know there's a little knack to getting used to it, but you you just it'd be very rare that you'd have to be in a pretty big river where you're going to on the white or something like that where you're going to launch maybe a little bit more line and then it would help but for most anything even in montana it, the six would be just fine but yeah you know kelly also talked again quite a bit about using floating lines and for example he does have um uh, a, a floating streamer line from airflow called the kelly gallup streamer float and obviously specially designed for throwing the heavier weighted flies and you know, I, I think it's overlooked throwing streamers on floating lines. You know, I do love throwing streamers on sinking lines. I know Kelly does as well. Uh, but it's kind of underrated these days throwing streamers on floating lines. And for example, when I was fishing from the back of the boat, which I did all day. I'm a polite host. Kelly was our guest on the river. So I was in the back of the boat all day. And when you're in the back of the boat, you can't always get the rod angles that you really want. You know, one of the things I've heard Kelly say a lot uh, is that he never manipulates, he never moves a fly by stripping. He moves the fly with the rod. In fact, when he was here, he, uh, he, he made a, uh, a quote. Uh, he asked Shaw, Griggs, or Shaw Grigsby, I think, a famous bass angler. He said, what's the difference between a, a, a good bass angler and an excellent bass angler? And he said, an excellent bass angler knows how to manipulate the bait or the lure with the rod and not just reel it in. And, you know, Kelly has his jerk strip retrieve. So he articulates or moves the fly using the rod. Well, to get to the point, from the back of the boat, I can't really always get the angles that I want to do that with the rod. So having a floating fly line, I can, I can keep the rod up here a little bit more. It's not the optimal down rod streamer situation where you're doing this, but I can, I can do this and get some articulation, especially with a weighted fly, which is actually pretty important to us on the Mad River because we have lots of these little buckets, which you're seeing here in this video. Uh, so anyway, uh, Kelly was using uh, the Streamer Max Long, his famous fly line from Airflow. He was using the heavier one. If you want to stick to the, uh, if, if you're thinking about a six weight in this rod, the 200 grain 6.7, he was using the heavier 7.8. And then we were also fl throwing at some points the uh, floating streamer line. Uh, I, on the other hand, was using the uh, brand new, also Echo rod. 
Uh, if you can tell, we really love Echo fly rods. Uh, I think they make some of the best uh, specific targeted rods in the business, no question. And um, this is their new 8.4B. Um, this is a rod that's 8 foot 4 inches. They make it in a 6, 7, and 8. Uh, and we've been clamoring for years to a variety of different companies to make this rod. A shorter streamer, small stream, and also bass specific. Um, uh, you know, of course, you can throw trout streamers, but this rod was designed for Midwestern smallmouth, largemouth, and streamer anglers. And the 8.4B, and I absolutely love this rod. So does our entire staff. I think everybody here in the shop has an Echo 8.4B, and you're going to be hearing a lot more about this rod. But that was the first day that I really got to fish streamers. I've been able to fish bass with it since. And again, you're going to be hearing a lot about the Echo 8.4B. And I was throwing a new line from Scientific Anglers that we really also love for the mad and for bass fishing, smallmouth fishing. But it's um, in the Sonar series and it's called the Sink Tip Mini. And it's actually a five foot sinking tip in the Titan series. So it loads up quick, it sinks quick, and that five foot tip is just absolutely perfect for, like I said, for getting down into those little buckets. Uh, also, a big hit, a new line, again, Scientific Anglers, called the Sink Tip Mini. It's a five-foot sink tip. Again, <clears throat> all of our staff here at the shop absolutely love this line. Uh, this is a go-to, and what a rig. I re have really enjoyed fishing this 8.4B with that Sink Tip Mini. But it will also throw the Streamer Max long. It'll throw the shovel heads. It throws a floating line very well. Uh, we've been fishing uh, poppers and bass bugs with this rod. Can't say enough about it, but on this particular day on the MAD, I was running a floating line uh, along with this uh, sink tip mini. So as always friends, we appreciate you being here. Subscribe to our channel, it's free, and that way you won't miss an episode, and hit that like button and be sure to stay tuned. We've got a lot more fly fishing content coming your way.